So I had someone ask me if Debian 12.1, uh, Debian Bookworm, which came out earlier this year, works on an IBM ThinkPad T42. So just like the video where I installed Debian 11, I'm pretty much going to do the exact same thing. I got the full DVD ISO just to keep consistent with the last video. I, I did the same thing in that too. So I think for today, I'm going to use this PETA SSD. Brand new in box. It was actually made just a month ago. It has a uh, July 2023 manufacture date on it. Also has the uh, post-Brexit UK certificate. I had no idea they still made these brand new, but they do. Alright, let's unbox it. So we've got our four hard drive screws, warranty card, a brochure, and a brochure for RAM. Missing one screw. Let's see if it posts. All right, we got post. Let's see if it reads our SSD. Okay, and it reads our 64 gig transcend SSD. Everything is looking pretty good. I'm going to pop in Debian 12. Burnt it to a verbatim Life Series DVD plus R. Those are very good. So far, so good. Let's see if I can actually get the camera to focus right. All right, that's a lot better. doesn't seem to want to take my Wi-Fi password right now, so I think I'll just use Ethernet. That would be a lot more practical, too. I don't know how fast the Wi-Fi card is on this. I think it's actually turning 20 years old this year, or, uh... Maybe early Good to me. I was thinking about doing this off of a flash drive this time. 
um, but I figure might as well do it the exact same way. If I did this with the flash drive, it would be a lot faster, but it's a 32-bit system, so might as well go with something a little more age-appropriate. Just gonna skip this for now. Huh, I guess I can't go back on that one. Didn't realize I had to scroll. All the way down. If I were to try and run GNOME on this, it would not be a good day. To keep consistent with the last video, I'm just going to stick with LXDE. LXDE is very light on resources. With how old this laptop is, that's the best bet by far, at least in my opinion. It's pretty amusing to hear it uh, retrieving each package off the DVD one by one and just listening to the optical drive. I knew several people, and I still meet people now, who first tried Linux around 2009, when Ubuntu had a big push with live CDs, and a lot of those people, that was their first time ever using Linux on anything. And they were running it off of a CD or a DVD or opening up a file explorer, or doing any basic task, was painfully slow. Just with the way that disks are burned, and with the way that the data has to get pulled off the disk, it made a bad impression on a lot of people. It's a shame, too, because Linux has gotten... Uh, so, so much better, just in terms of uh, plug-and-play, compatibility, drivers, even setup. Installing Linux in 2009 was a lot more, generally speaking, a lot more involved. Being able to use a GUI like this and just having Debian automatically partition everything it's so, so much easier. You don't have to manually make a grub partition and a swap partition and a home partition and all that fun stuff. If I have some time, I think it would be fun to install Gentoo on this. Um, at the same time, with how old this is, I kind of dread, I dread the idea of installing Gentoo on it and making that poor CPU have to compile everything from source. I think that probably would be the most optimized by far for any new age operating system, but that would be uh, quite the beast to tame. I'm really, really glad the DVD drive didn't stall out or get overloaded doing that. I was a little worried that I was going to get overworked and quit because that's what used to happen to me 
whenever I used to run Ubuntu Live CDs in 2009. Just took it like a champ. So it looks like Debian installed successfully. And it looks like Grub's working all right. And there you have it. That's Debian 12 on an IBM ThinkPad T42. The same ThinkPad we installed Debian 11 on in 2021. Let's see what version of Firefox we're running. 32-bit version of 102.15 ESR. Let's make this as lean, lean as we can make it. Uncheck every single recommendation. Have your tabs open up to a blank page. That's better. Now let's install my absolute favorite add-on of all time, uBlock Origin. Keeps the internet bearable another day. There we go. Let's see how the ThinkPad runs YouTube in 2023. It held its own pretty well when we installed Debian 11 CPU is at max load. Fortunately, we're only topping out at 65 degrees Celsius. I redid the thermals on this when I installed Windows 2000 last month. So we're only using a gig of RAM, but we're still waiting for the YouTube homepage to load. So the last time I ended the video on Hotel Mario, and while I would love to strongly suggest that to everybody, be like a Hotel Mario evangelist, I think this time it'd be fun to watch the video of installing Linux two years ago. I don't think it's going to run well. It's kind of a funny inception idea.
I have Ability Radeon 7500. I received it in a box of junk laptops and had a punctured screen, but it still turned on and seemed to run fine otherwise. So I disassembled it, cleaned it up, put new thermals on it, and then uh, upgraded the RAM to the motherboard's max of 2 gig. Then I finally swapped the toplet out with one from a P43 PI coincidentally at play around that had a lot of cooling problems. This actually ran perfect the last time, or near perfect. too powerful for Debian 12. That's pretty impressive. I mean, the CPU's 20 years old. A 32 megabyte laptop GPU. That's from 2001. I think it came out like a month after the original Xbox and GameCube. And, uh, here it's running a new operating system that came out this year keeping up with modern YouTube uh, it's it's holding its own quite well for what it is and it looks like we do have the graphics drivers installed already for hardware acceleration there are probably ways to make the YouTube videos run faster and get faster playback but I think I'm just going to cut it here for now